So in this video today, guys, we're going to go over the Mach 2 review. So first, this first question says find the volume of the remaining foam after the cylinder has been removed. So we're going to find the volume of this prism here, um, and then we're going to subtract from it the volume of the cylinder. So I'm going to say the volume of the prism first, and if you remember, that's one that's not on the formula sheet. That's length times width times height. So we're going to multiply 20 times 16 times 16, and when I do that, I got 5,100. 120 and obviously that's inches cubed. Now we're going to find the volume of the cylinder. Okay, so to do this we're doing pi times the radius squared times the height. Okay, so notice our radius is right here. That's 5 and our height is right here and it's 20 inches and if we didn't have that that would be the same as this down here. Okay, and that's important to notice. Okay, so this is going to be pi times 5 squared times our height, which is 20. Okay, now we are going to multiply by pi here because we need them in the same units. So we can't have pi in this to get the answer. So this is going to be 1570.8. Um, and again, that's inches cubed. And we are going to subtract these because we want to know just the gray part of this. We're going to take the cylinder out of it. Okay, so when we do that, that's going to be 3549.2, and again, this is inches cubed. Okay, right there, okay? The next one says, given the volume of cylinder, a cylinder is 37.7 centimeters cubed, and the radius two meters, what's the height of the cylinder? So once again, we're going to look at our formula for a cylinder, and that is pi r squared h, okay? So it's telling us what the volume is, so this is our v, okay? And then the radius is two, so we're gonna go ahead and substitute that in. So I'm gonna do it over here, 37 point, whoops, 37.7 is equal to pi times the two squared, because that's our radius, times our height, okay? So this is gonna give us 37.7, is equal to pi times 4 times h. So I'm going to divide this side over here on the right by 4 pi and this side by 4 pi. Whoops. Having trouble writing today, y'all. So when you do that in your calculator, um, you get that h is equal to 3 centimeters. So that's our answer here. Remember, you can do that right in the calculator just like that. So number three says a sanitizer bottle shaped like a square pyramid. Each side is three inches and has a height. Okay, so this is a square pyramid, so that means our base is a square. Okay, so when we're finding the volume of a pyramid, that's equal to length times width times height divided by three, right? So that's what we're going to do. Now notice our length and width this time, though, is going to be 3 and 3 because that's our base. Um, volume of a pyramid is base times height, and base is length times width, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go 3 times 3 times 9. That's our height, right? And divide all that by 3. One of those 3s is going to cancel out, right? So that's going to be 3 times 9. which is 27, right? So this is going to be 27, and again, it's inches cubed. So on this one, our answer is B. All right, so on the next one, it's just given the volume of the cone is 60 pi centimeters cubed, and the height is 10 inches. What's the radius of the cone? And round your answer to the nearest tenth. So volume of a cone, again, is going to be equal to pi times the radius squared times the height divided by 3. Okay, so we're now we're going to substitute in what we have. So this is going to be, we have the volume of the cone here, and the height is, is 10. So we're going to say 60 pi is equal to pi times r squared. That's what we don't know. That's what we're looking for. What is the radius, right? Times 10 all of that divided by 3. Okay, so notice already we have pi on both sides, so that's going to cancel out. Then we're going to multiply both sides by 3 to get rid of that 3 that's over there on the right. So 3 times 60, that's going to be 180, is equal to 10r squared. Now these 3's canceled out as well, 2, right? So divide both sides by 10. 
So that's going to give us 18 is equal to r squared. So now we're going to take the square root of 18, right? So take the square root of 18. So r is going to be equal to 4.2, and that's going to be centimeters, right? Okay, number five says find the radius of a sphere given its volume. Okay, so once again, the volume of a sphere, again, this is on our formula sheet, is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so we're going to substitute in the volume. That's what this is right here, volume. So that's 1,333.33 1, is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Oh, and this had a pi two on it too, didn't it? I almost missed that. Um, this had pi, okay? So once again, notice what cancels out on both sides of the equal sign are those pi's, right? So how do we get rid of a 4 thirds? We're going to multiply this times 3 fourths, right? 3 fourths is the reciprocal of 4 thirds. That's how we get rid of a fraction is multiplied by its reciprocal, right? So if we take 3 fourths of 1,333.33, we get 999.9975. That's what I got, okay? And that's equal to our r to the third. So the easiest way to get rid of this r to the third is to take it to the one-third power in your calculator, okay? So we're going to take, remember to use your caret symbol, taking that 999.9975 to the one-third power. And when we do that, you're going to get that r is equal to 10, and that's feet, okay? This is a concept you guys need to practice to make sure you guys did not do well on this um, concept on the activity that we did um, last week, okay? So it says find the value of question mark in the figure. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to go ahead and extend this down here so I have a little more room to work. <clears throat> Hopefully you remember that where the, um, this is the radius, where the radius and the tangent intersect out here on the circles, there's a right angle, right? Now we also know that this right here is 9. Why? Because they're just two radii of the whole image, which means this whole length right here is 9 plus 6, which is 15. So now that's what's going to enable us to solve for this other side over here, which is our question mark. Y'all see that? So we're calling again that this side over here is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So we're going to say 9 squared plus 15 squared Sorry, take that back. 9 squared plus question mark squared plus question mark squared is equal to 15 squared. So this is going to be 81 plus question mark squared is equal to 225. We're going to subtract that 81 from both sides. So question mark squared is going to be equal to 144. And then we take the square root of both sides, right, to get our answer. So question mark is equal to 12 here. Okay, so number seven says find the measure of VZY, VZY here, and YZX, YZX. So it's asking us for these angles right here, okay? So to get that, that's pretty easy, right? So aren't we going to add 144 plus 114 and divide that by 2? 144 plus 114 is 258. And when we divide that by 2, we get 129. Now, if, let me just say this, if it asks for this up here, VZYX, um, then we would subtract that 129 from 180 because um, those two angles would make a line. But that's not the case here. It's just asking us for the easy answer, okay? The volume of a rectangular prism is 42 meters cubed. So this is the volume equals. Find the volume of a triangular prism with the same base and height. So um, if we have the volume of a prism... And it says the same base and height. Isn't this equal to base times height? So if we have a triangular prism, it's another prism, right? 
it's also going to be equal to base times height, right? So if the base and height of the first one is 42 meters cubed, then guess what the base of, or what the, what the volume of the second one is? It's 42 meters cubed. So that's our answer. Number, and that's because this has the same base and height. This is Cavalieri's principle, y'all. That's why this is true. It's because the base and the height are the same. Okay, base area and, this, and the height. All right, so this next one says find the measure of angle EFG. So EFG is this angle down here, EFG right there, right? So we're going to do outside arc minus inside arc divided by 2. So this is 121 minus 39 divided by 2. And when I did this, I got, where's my paper, 82 divided by 2, so this is 41 degrees. So our next one says find the exact area of the shaded section, okay? So notice here we have the unshaded section, so up here to get this we're going to do 360 minus the 240, so this is going to be 120 degrees up there. That's going to be our theta, and our radius is going to be the 7, and it's asking for area of a sector, okay? So that formula is Again, on our formula sheet, pi r squared theta divided by 360. And it says exact, so we're looking for the answer with pi, okay? So we're now going to substitute in pi times 7 squared times 120 and divide that by 360. And we want the answer with pi, so we're not going to multiply by pi. So when I did this, I got that the area was equal to uh, 49 pi divided by 3, and that's going to be feet squared. Name the 2D shape created in the given 3D figures cross-section. So we're looking at where does this piece of paper intersect the object. So on this one we get a square. On the uh, vertical, if we go straight down through the comb, we're going to get a triangle. If we go straight down through the cylinder, we're going to get a rectangle. And if we go straight down through this prism, looks to me again like it's a square. Okay. All right. So this is named the 3D shape created when the 2D, 2D shape is rotated around about the given line. Okay. So in this case, if we rotate all the way around that line right there, we're going to have a sphere, aren't we? If we rotate all the way around this line, we're going to get a hemisphere. And if we rotate all the way around this line, we're going to get a cone. Okay. Uh, 13 says, by Cavalier's principle, this right triangular prism and the right rectangular prism have the same volume. Okay, so we know they have the same volume. We notice that they have the same height. Does everybody see that? The heights are the same. Okay. If the center plane intersects a solid parallel to their base, which of the following choices should be the base and height of the triangular cross-section? Okay, so this is what we know. If we're doing Cavalier's principle, then we have the same height. We also need to have the same what? We need to have the same base areas. So the base areas have to be equal, okay? So over here, if we look at our base area, we have 8 times 6, and that's 48. And that means that whatever we get over here for our triangular prism, it has to be the same. So we're looking for 48, okay? Well, notice that this is a triangle, right? So this is going to have to be, um, in a rectangular prism, our base is equal to length times width, whereas in a triangular, our base is equal to one half base times height, right? Okay. Um, so our base is B, and our height is H, right? Um, so what we're going to have to do now is plug that, plug each of these values over here on the left into that formula, one half base times height, and see which one gives us 48. Okay. So in this first one, we're going to go one half times four times 12. Well, that's 48. Half of 48 is 24. So that's definitely not our answer. We're going to do one half times four times eight. That's 32. Half of 32 is 16. That one's not our answer. 1 half 8 times 12, that's 96. Half of 96 is 48. Looks to me like that's our answer. Let's just double check with this last one to make sure that it's not. 
1 half times 8 times 14. And when I did that, I got um, 112. And so half of 112 is 56. So that's definitely not our answer as well. So again, remember, if it says Cavalier's principle, then we got to have the same height, which we have, but also the same base areas, OK? Um, so that's why the answer was C. Number 14 says, find the volume of a hemisphere with a diameter of 33 centimeters. Okay, so there's a key word there, diameter. Okay, do we use diameter when we're solving anything? No. So we have to notice here that we're going to take the 33 and divide it by 2. And that's going to give us 16.5 for our radius. And it says also says a hemisphere here. It doesn't say a sphere. So the volume of a hemisphere is not 4 thirds, but 2 thirds pi r cubed. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and put that r in there. We're going to do 2 times pi times our 16.5 cubed and divide all that by 3. Okay, that's going to be our volume. So when I did that, I got the exact measure is 2,994.75 and that's pi centimeters cubed and then our approximate answer if we were to multiply by pi is 9408.3 and this is again centimeters cubed so depending on whether it has pi in the answer or not these would be your two answers okay so our last question down here says if a pizza has a diameter of 10 inches the pizza is divided into eight slices what is the arc length of two slices of pizza give the answer in terms of pi so this one has a whole bunch of stuff we need to notice first of all it gives us a diameter so we want the radius so remember again the radius is the diameter divided by two right so that's going to be five then it says the pizza is divided into eight slices so what we want to do is take a whole pizza which is 360 degrees and divide it by 8 and that's going to give us 45 degrees okay and then it also says what is the arc length of two pizzas two slices of pizza okay so that means that whatever this number right here was we're going to actually have to multiply the 45 times 2 right so that's going to give us 90 now we could find the the arc length um, and that's what we're looking for here arc length right of one pizza and then multiply it by two or we could just do it 90 degrees okay so that's what I'm going to do so this is going to be the length is going to be 2 pi r theta divided by 360 okay so let's go ahead and substitute in 2 pi and it says give us our answer in terms of pi so we're not going to multiply by that pi our radius we said was 5 and then we're going to multiply that by 90 because that's two pieces of pizza and divide all that by 360 Okay, when I did that, I got 5 pi over 2 inches. Okay, now if it asked me how many inches that would be, then I would multiply 5 times pi and divide that by 2.